Okay, so now we are going to work on a few different things. So we're going to make the turn method take in a bet and a number. And it's going to ha also ha reduce the bankroll by whatever the bet amount is. And then give the winnings, if the number is picked, to um, to the bankroll. So it's, it's going to actually you know increase the, the, the bankroll if they win. I just figured that uh, if, they're, if they're placing a bet, we would get rid of that money. Just, this will make the logic a little bit more understandable, get rid of it, and then they just will win their winnings if they win or not, instead of having to deal with that afterwards. So we're going to first add um, an int, an int that is named bet, and then an int which is the selected number. So right now we're just going to worry about um, a single number. Obviously you can do uh, doubles, uh, triples, um, it's called a street or a double street or all the other stuff. Right now we're going to worry about just one, select the number, and try to get that to work in the functionality at this point. So the first, so therefore, we, we, we just tackled uh, the bankroll, so you're taking in with the bankroll, um, or the, the bet, yeah, the bet and the select number. So now we're going to work on reducing the, the bankroll. So obviously it's going to be reduced by the bet amount. So the first thing we want to do is reduce it, but let's say that they are putting in a bet that is more than the money they have. Well, we want to not allow that to occur, so we want to do a quick check, and that's why we're going to do an if statement, checking to see if the bankroll is greater than or equal to the bet. If it is, then we're going to reduce it by that amount. Again, here's one of the kind of shorter hand ways of, of writing to reduce it by the uh, that amount. So now I'm just going to copy that and put all of that in there because uh, because if they're not placing the bet, the rest of it doesn't need to occur at all. Just we just make sure we're keeping it nice and clean with where the code is happening. And we don't have any funny business later of trying to debug and figure out why certain things are happening when they shouldn't be happening. So if they don't have enough money, then we're going to let them know you just don't have enough funds. Awesome. So now we can get rid of that. Again, I highly recommend putting comments with throughout your code, uh, and then you can just kind of work through that, and it makes sense. So now we want to give winnings if the number uh, is if the select number is the is the winning number. And so the way we're going to do that is if the spin number, which is what we just got from the spin, equals the selected number, well then obviously they're the same and, and we picked the right thing, so that's going to give us a win. We also want to do an uh, or because if it uh, if the selected number is zero zero and we and we got a thirty seven we want this is where we want to make sure that we uh, that those actually do equal the same thing. Um, no one's going to put in a zero zero 
and 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 win if we don't put this case in there. So if that equals 37 and the selected number equals 0, 0. Now here's where I caught that we actually don't want this to, to be an int because 0 and 0, 0 actually in int terms are the exact same. So we're going to actually change this to a string. This is how we're going to be able to get a zero and double zero. Another way we could have done this is just gotten rid of the double zero and gone with more of the European style. But I also I really kind of want uh, I want to show how we can make those changes on the fly and actually make it do exactly what we want it to do. And in our case, we set out saying we wanted it to be have double zero. So here we go. We're going to have that input be a string actually, which means we need to go back and change a little bit of this. But with using the integer class we can do uh you can we can use parse int and uh take in and make and make that uh turn into an integer uh when it's as it's done and then also on the second part for the selected number and the rest of this line just go and turn the zero zeros into a string so just put uh, double quotations um, surrounding the double zero so that that can still stay as a string because if we left it, if we parsed it to an integer, then it would turn into a zero, which would not be uh, the correct way for delineating zero and double zero. And so now if it, if it equals that, then it's going to give us a winning number. It's going to say that it has, it's winning. And just remember right here uh, where it says integer par integer parse int, select a number, just, just disregard the integer parse int and just have that equal equal uh, a string of zero zero. And then of course the else would be just letting them know that they did not actually win and so we're going to tell them that their winning number did, was not selected. And here we can also just let them know what the winning number was. Oh no, actually we're, we're telling them uh, what... And here we can tell them how much they're going to win. And so we're going to do a calculation of how much they're going to win. which is going to be 36, which is so because it's uh, 35 to 1 is the ratio. So for every uh, $1 they bet, they're going to get 35. So since we took away the 1, then we're just going to, then they're just going to get a multiple of 36. So if they bet 1, then they're going to get 36. If they get 2, they'll get uh, 36 times 2, obviously.
So a better way we actually can do this is to get that calculation of what the bet is going to be uh, off the bat. And then we can have more of a variable situation going on instead of doing the calculation there and then having to redo a calculation because we're also going to have to add this to the bankroll. And so either we have to do the calculation again, which in, in this instance that wouldn't necessarily be uh, too hard or anything. It's not a very complex uh, equation. But it is always good to be thinking ahead for if this is going to get more complex. And always just kind of, if you can, think of a little bit about the efficiency uh, when you're creating stuff, creating code, because we really only want to do that calculation once and then just re-reference it multiple times. So now that we've done that calculation at the beginning, we can just go back and get that, that number. Otherwise, we'd have to do that multiple times. Now, I'd always think of code as get it, fun get it functional first and then go back trying to make it more efficient. But again, with more experience and knowledge, you'll know how to make things more efficient right off the bat. And so when you know that and you come across it, you might as well do it to begin with so it just uh, saves time later. So now we can do a little test to see how this is going to perform. And remember, we changed that to a string, so we need to actually pass it in a string as a second argument and not an int anymore. Now, this is, remember, just taking into account that they're only doing a single number selection and only one bet. So they're not doing multiple numbers and doing multiple sum multiple bets at once. This is just one bet per round and uh, one number. We're going to worry about doing the other stuff uh, in the future episodes. So if we play it, it shows, nope, we didn't win, we didn't win. And so here's kind of a, a foreshadowing of what we're going to do in the future. We're going to make the other ones uh, also work as well. So that's what's going to happen in our next episode. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.